Friends, are you passionate about your input devices? Do you have preferences for a particular keyboard layout or particular mouse models that you'd like to use? Have you memorized the full spectrum of the Cherry MX key switch family? Are you hip to the trend of going analog with the wondrous devices of the pre-apocalyptic age, such as the typewriter and the phonograph? Then, friends, if I got something for you, I would like to introduce to you the magical device known as the fountain pen. Yes. Now, this miraculous device from the past allows you to instantiate all of your thoughts from your brain to paper, no matter how mundane or profound. Suitable for all your business types, whether you trade in musical instruments or in monorails. And uh, unlike the dip pen, it carries its ink within itself, operating on the principles of hydraulics and pneumatics. That's right, the same scientific principles that put the steam and steampunk in the palm of your hand without either the inconvenience or the shame of having to walk around with gears glued to your clothes. <laughs> Now, this is a gathering of technologists, and I realize there are some people here who are probably at this moment silently harumphing to themselves. Harumph, they say. I have not allowed my hands to touch a tube of ink that bears ink in years. And in fact, I am so digital and online that my own mother calls me by my Twitter handle. Well, fair enough. Neo, far be it from me to disparage the habits that bring someone joy as they walk through this veil of tears. But I will say this, a major reason why many people come to dislike using pens is that ultimately the fountain and the ball, I'm sorry, the ballpoint and the rollerball pens all have to require a certain amount of downward pressure to use, which requires a certain amount of grip tightness and that whole leads to fatigue. In contrast, a well-tuned, properly functioning fountain pen will lay down a line of ink with no downward pressure at all, just stroking across the surface of the uh, of the paper. Sounds like a trivial thing, but it actually matters a great deal for ergonomics and uh, uh, usability. Okay, um, enough of the pattern. <laughs> that is exhausting. I cannot do sales. So um, let's see here. Um, basically, they're just fun. They come in millions of different varieties, millions of different styles, and um, uh, all kinds of materials. And I'm not even going to talk about inks in the time that I have. It which is impossible for me to do so. This pen I'm waving around in my hand right now is a Jinhao 992. Um, oh, so much variation I couldn't show them all, sorry. Uh, the prices range from very low. This Jinhao that I've got in my hand right now is only about $3 online, up to uh, Maki E Japanese lacquer, which will cost more than your first used car cost. Uh, there are all kinds of things to learn about how the different fountain pens work. There's different filling mechanisms that they all use. Uh, the most common approach is to use cartridges, and they, they're proprietary, just like uh, razor blades. Uh, only certain cartridges fit in certain pens. There is one international standard, but for the most part, you, when you buy a, a cartridge of ink, you have to use it with that same brand of pen. There's also converters, which allow you to use bottled ink, and it's the same situation. You have to use the converter that fits that particular brand of pen. And some pens actually come with as piston fillers, which means they can't use cartridges at all. They only can fill from bottles of ink, and the piston mechanism to fill with ink is in the, the base of the pen itself. Uh, many other filling mechanisms besides those. There's many different types of nibs that exist out there from extra fine and even thinner uh, Japanese uh, pens have ultra extra fine all the way through medium broad, double broad. There's also stub and italic nibs which are used for writing in italic style, calligraphic font, and there's also flex nibs. Uh, one thing that's very important to understand about pens is that you should never press them down hard. If, uh, some people think that the proper way to use them is to press them down so that the nibs, the, the, the tines of the nib splay out. If you do that with a modern steel fountain pen or even a gold fountain pen, you will wind up destroying that nib, so please don't do that. The exception to the rule are those ones that are actually marketed as flex nibs, which are supposed to be used like that, but there's very few that are like that and they're marketed specifically that way. Uh, the few drawbacks that exist to fountain pens are that there's uh, uh, nib control issues sometimes, especially on the low end, but sometimes surprisingly even on the high end, although in that situation you can usually get a, an immediate return. And uh, it, you may find yourself, if you're buying cheap pens, learning the basics of how to tune nibs. It's all on YouTube. It's very straightforward and not too difficult to learn. Also, bad paper does not cooperate with fountain pen ink very well. You get the bleed through of ink quite frequently and also what's called feathering where it just spreads a little bit broader than it ought to be and it's not as crisp. Uh, for further info, there's YouTube. Uh, Goulet Pens uh, is one of the pen companies that's out there. They have made a whole bunch of videos called Fountain Pen 101 that are very good. Jet Pens is another pen company that I like that makes a lot of videos describing fountain pens. And I will now utter one of the sentences in English that has never been uttered before. Reddit is a knowledgeable and friendly community. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>